Hello my crafty friends, this is Monica from Also Petite. Welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this strap pad. This is a fantastic scrap buster project that you can do in no time. If you need pattern for this project, check out my previous video where I showed you how to draft a pattern for a strap pad in any size that you want. Otherwise, you can download a free PDF pattern from my website. I love this type of strap pad with a closure so you can easily open it and place your strap inside. Why? Because on some occasions you may have a project or even ready-made bag or a backpack where the strap is attached to your project. So there isn't really a way to fit the strap through the tunnel. But since we have an opening, you can simply open it wide, place your strap inside and close it. Just like that. So if this is something you've been looking for and couldn't find, you are in the right place. To make my strap pad, I'm going to mix those two fabrics. This one is more of a lightweight cotton poplin type of fabric, which I'm going to interface with some woven interfacing to add just a little bit more structure to it. And this one here is more of a medium weight cotton drill that is sturdy enough, so I'm not going to interface it. And to add some cushion, some softness to my strap pad, I'm going to use fusible fleece. If you don't have fusible fleece, but you do have some sort of foam stabilizer, stabilizer that is flexible, and soft you can use that instead but to reduce the bulk at the seam i would cut it without the seam allowance you will need to cut two main panels from external fabric as you can see i already fused it with my fusible fleece then you will need to cut four wings two of them from external fabric and two from your lining fabric I fused some fusible fleece to the external pieces, but I left the lining as it is. You will also need two sets of press snaps. I'm using 12 millimeters metal spring press snaps and you'll need single fold bias binding. I made my own and the finish width is 18 millimeters. To begin, take your wing pattern piece and on the right side of your wings, mark the placement of your snaps. So I'm just going to take a pen and mark a little dot on the right side of the fabric. And you're going to do that on both pieces. Once you've got that mark, then you need to decide which wing will be on top and which will be on the bottom. So they're going to overlap. So you need to decide which which one is on top, which one on the bottom. Then take the one that is going to be on the bottom and punch a hole where the snap placement is located. Here we go. Then you're going to install the male part of the snap. I have a separate video tutorial that will show you how to install your press snaps in case you need some help. Then you can take one of your lining pieces and we're going to place those pieces wrong sides together. So line them up and then you can pin or clip them together. just like that. Then repeat the steps for the remaining two pieces. When you are ready, you can take this to the machine and baste around all sides. Here we go, just like that. If for some reason you have extra fabric, make sure to trim it down. You want to have 
the edges nice and neat so I clearly didn't cut my fabric properly <laughs> but that is absolutely fine now you can take your single fold bias binding and we're going to finish off this curved edge so we're going to leave the top edge as it is so take your bias binding place it on top so unfold one side place it on top so right sides are facing each other just like that and clip it in place so you want to take your time line up the edge of your binding around the wing and pin or clip it in place make sure you don't stretch your bias binding especially around those curved corners Here we go you can trim it down repeat that on the other wing as well now you can take both wings to the machine and stitch the binding in place Next, bring the bias binding towards the edge and double check if you don't have any unwanted puckering. To finish off the edge, you will need to wrap the binding around it. So to do that, line up the folded edge of your bias binding beyond the previous stitching line and clip or pin it in place. Take your time. You want to keep the bias binding parallel to the stitching line. Don't stretch it and ease it in around the corners. When you are ready, sew the bias binding about 2 mm from the folded edge. If you need to, trim the excess binding. Punch holes through the snap placement markings on the top wing and install the female part of the snap. This is how it should look like. Now you can snap them together, then take one of your main body pieces and place the wings on top. You should have the midpoints marked along your wings and the main panel so you can easily align these straight edges. So place the wings on top with right sides facing up, match the midpoints and clip everything together. Do that on the other side as well. And when you are ready, go to the machine and baste the wings to the main panel. Take the remaining main panel and place it on top of the first one with wrong side facing each other. Make sure to line up the edges and clip them together. Now you can base the main panels around all sides. Take your single fold bias binding and finish off the edge in the same way you've done on the wings. So unfold one side and with right sides together, clip it around the entire main panel. 
When you are ready, you can stitch the binding in place. I have a separate video tutorial where I show you different methods on how to join the ends of your bias binding. Once you've got that stitched, again you're going to flip the bias binding around the edge and line up the folded edge of the bias binding just beyond that previous stitching line, just like that, and clip everything together. Once you've got that clipped, you can take this to the machine and again sew along the edge of your bias binding, making sure you cover the previous stitching line. If you have to give your strap pad a final press, otherwise this project is now finished. Well done. So you can take your strap and place it inside. If you enjoyed this tutorial, let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, subscribe to my channel for similar content. See you next time. Stay crafty, friends.